exposure to hydrogen sulfide, the first aid procedures. Workers who are overcome by exposure to high concentrations of hydrogen sulfide must be quickly and carefully rescued. Workers who do not have adequate training or protective equipment must not attempt to rescue other workers. Hydrogen sulfide is an extremely toxic gas that can rapidly poison workers. Therefore, untrained and unprotected workers rushing into hazardous areas to rescue a fallen worker may lead to additional casualties. If a worker has been overcome by inhaling hydrogen sulfide, the rescue and first aid procedure should encompass the following practices. Firstly, the alarm should be sounded before attempting a rescue in order to alert other personnel on the work area of the presence of hydrogen sulfide in the ambient air. The alarm will also signal to other personnel that a rescue is in progress, ensuring that if the rescuer is also overcome by the toxic gas, further assistance can be provided. The alarm may also alert a rescue team trained to provide first aid and cardiopulmonary resuscitation. This provision depends on the specific procedures laid out in the employer's contingency plan. After sounding the alarm, the rescuer should don a positive pressure self-contained breathing apparatus. The respiratory equipment for emergencies should be readily accessible to employees. The rescued worker should be quickly moved to an uncontaminated environment with fresh air or at least an environment with adequate ventilation. The worker should not be allowed to move about unnecessarily as the symptoms of pulmonary edema may be delayed. If the worker is not breathing, artificial respiration should be started. If the heart has stopped, CPR should be started. Mouth-to-mouth -mouth contact should be avoided by using mouth guards or shields. Contaminated clothing should be removed but the worker should be kept warm. The rescuer must also be mindful of any other injuries the worker may have sustained. The rescued individual must receive medical care as soon as possible and be evaluated and treated by a physician in order to detect any delayed health effects. Contact with liquefied hydrogen sulfide may result in frostbite. In this case, the exposed worker should be quickly removed from the source of contamination. Clothing or jewelry that may restrict circulation should be gently removed. For clothing that is stuck to the skin, the garment should be carefully cut around that part and rest of the garment should be removed. The affected area should be loosely covered with a sterile dressing. Do not attempt to rewarm the affected area on site. Do not attempt to rub or apply direct heat to the affected area. The victim should be transported to a hospital for immediate medical care. All contaminated clothing, shoes, and leather goods should be double bagged, sealed, and labeled for safe disposal. In case of eye contact with hydrogen sulfide gas, the eyes should be flushed with gently flowing, lukewarm water for 15 to 20 minutes while holding the eyelid open. In case of eye contact with liquid hydrogen sulfide, the eyes should be immediately but briefly flushed with gently flowing, lukewarm water. The eyes should then be covered with a sterile dressing. Do not attempt to rewarm the affected eyes on site. The victim should be transported to a hospital for immediate medical care. Victims exposed only to hydrogen sulfide gas do not pose substantial risks of secondary contamination to first responders. However, first responders could be at risk of secondary contamination by breathing vapors from clothing heavily soaked with liquid hydrogen sulfide or touching clothing that has been saturated with the chemical. Therefore, in order to prevent potential exposures to hydrogen sulfide, first responders should be equipped with appropriate respiratory protection and any other required PPE.